Have you ever wondered why ice melts and turns into water? Well, it's all about the fascinating world of solids and liquids. Let's dive into it. In our world, we have different types of matter, and two of them are solids and liquids. Solids are like your favorite toy or a piece of chocolate. They have a definite shape that doesn't change unless you break or melt them. They can't flow or fill up a container like liquids can. On the other hand, liquids are like water or juice. They don't have a fixed shape and take up the shape of whatever container they are put into. You can pour them, and they will flow from one place to another. Now here's the magic. When you heat a solid like ice, it can change into a liquid like water. And that's because of the warmth. So that's why ice, which is a solid, melts into water, a liquid, when it gets warm. But what makes water so special that it can be both a solid and a liquid? Well, let's dive into it. Water, a simple molecule made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, has some pretty amazing properties. In its liquid state, it's what we drink, swim in, and use to wash our hands. It flows freely, takes the shape of its container and can be poured. But when the temperature drops, something magical happens. Water transforms from its liquid state into a solid state, which we commonly know as ice. In this state, water becomes hard and rigid, and it keeps its shape unless we decide to sculpt it into a snowman or an ice cube. Now, how does water manage this extraordinary transformation? Well, it's all about temperature. When we heat water, the molecules get more energy and start moving faster and faster, which keeps it in its liquid state. But when the temperature drops, the molecules slow down and start to stick together, forming a solid. And what's really cool is that water is one of the few substances that expand when it freezes. Most substances contract and become denser, but not water. When water freezes, it forms a crystal structure that takes up more space than the water did as a liquid. That's why ice floats on top of water. But wait, there's more. As a liquid, water has a high heat capacity, meaning it can absorb a lot of heat before it starts to get hot. This is why our oceans don't boil during the day under the sun, and it's also why a cool glass of water is so refreshing on a hot day. And then there's water's ability to dissolve many substances, earning it the title of the universal solvent. This makes it crucial for life as it allows nutrients to be transported throughout our bodies and in the environment. So the next time you're enjoying a cold drink on a hot day, remember it's all thanks to the amazing properties of water. Have you ever mixed sand and water? What happens? Well, let's dive right into it. When we combine different liquids and solids, we create all sorts of useful mixtures. Think about the last time you played at the beach, making sand castles. It's the combination of sand, a solid and water, a liquid, that creates the perfect mud for your architectural masterpiece. Now, let's consider dough, a mixture of flour and water. Without the liquid water, the solid flour wouldn't bind together to form the dough we need for baking delicious bread and cookies. But here's a fun fact. Not all solids behave the same way in water. Some solids dissolve, like sugar or salt, turning our water sweet or salty. However, other solids like oil or plastic do not dissolve. They rather float or sink depending on their density. Isn't it exciting to see how solids and liquids can interact to form all sorts of fun mixtures? Why does a stone sink but a sponge floats in water? A question as intriguing as this brings us to the fascinating concepts of buoyancy and absorption. Let's first dive into the world of buoyancy. Imagine you're in a swimming pool. You're floating effortlessly, aren't you? That's buoyancy in action. It's the force exerted by a fluid like water that opposes the weight of an immersed object. So when an object is less dense than the fluid it's in, it floats. That's why a sponge, which is full of tiny air pockets making it less dense than water, floats on the surface. Now, let's consider a stone. A stone doesn't have air pockets and is denser than water. So, what happens? It sinks, of course. The water can't exert enough force to oppose the weight of the stone. Now, let's switch lanes and talk about absorption. Absorption is all about how materials interact with water. Some materials love water so much, they soak it all up. Others, not so much. Take a sponge, for example. It's like a water-loving superhero. It has tiny pores that draw in water and hold onto it, a process known as absorption. That's why sponges are so great at cleaning up spills. But what about a raincoat? If it absorbed water like a sponge, we'd all be soaked during a downpour. Instead, raincoats repel water. They're made of materials that don't absorb water, keeping us nice and dry. So you see, 
Buoyancy and absorption are everywhere in our lives. From the floating sponge in your kitchen sink, to the stone you skipped across the pond, to the raincoat that keeps you dry on a rainy day. Understanding these concepts helps us make sense of why things behave the way they do around water. And the next time you see a sponge soaking up a spill or a stone sinking to the bottom of a pond, you'll know why. So, whether it's a toy floating in the bath or a raincoat that keeps you dry, it's all about buoyancy and absorption. Have you noticed some funny-looking symbols on items around your house? These aren't just doodles or decorations. They are international safety symbols, and they play a big role in keeping us all safe. Let's take the skull and crossbones symbol, for instance. It isn't just a sign that pirates are nearby. It's a warning that the substance inside is poisonous and could make us very ill. Or how about the fire symbol? That's not an invitation to roast marshmallows. It's a way of telling us that the item is flammable and could catch fire easily. And it's not all about danger. Some symbols tell us how to use things safely. The keep dry symbol with the umbrella, for example, tells us to protect the item from moisture. So, these symbols aren't just funny pictures. They are a language of safety, speaking to us from all over the world. Next time you see these symbols, you'll know exactly what they mean and how they help keep us safe.